Welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to do another semiconductor update. The big news happening today is obviously ARM went public. Uh, we can see as I am recording, the stock is up roughly 18% already. So congratulations to all the investors that got into ARM IPO. This is one I'm sitting back into right now, not, uh, maybe waiting for better buying opportunities in the future. If not, it's okay. I have plenty of exposure into the semiconductor space. So today I want to take a closer look at a few updates affecting the semiconductor market. We do have some pretty cool updates on the foundry spending, which is good. We do follow a lot of semiconductor equipment companies. Some kind of uh, talks about the AI space. Obviously, NVIDIA is going to be discussed there. We're going to take a closer look at Apple, TSMC, and AMD. So let's take a closer look in today's episode. Uh, so that's the first news. The second thing I want to take a closer look at is I'm going to jump into NVIDIA, but we do hear this this kind of overview uh, from DigiTimes that the AI server market to see sustained demand, says Quanta Senior VP. Uh, so this is something that has been very much discussed throughout the upcoming months, right? Hey, we're seeing this huge demand for uh, AI servers, right? These AI servers are servers that are accelerated. Uh, they usually come with some form of accelerator via a GPU you via something else. Um, and one of the things that we're seeing is, hey, look, this demand is not going to last here forever. Um, but we are hearing talks from other tech specialists that, hey, look, that's what we're seeing right now. This AI server demand is still here to stay for a while. Um, the real question is, hey, is this going to be like this forever? How long? Um, is it just going to be a few quarters? And I do believe that's the main risk with some AI companies like maybe NVIDIA right now. What if in just three to four quarters, this AI server demand dies down? what's really going to happen to NVIDIA. Uh, so I definitely believe that's one of the bearish cases. Obviously, I'm more bullish in the AI market. And obviously, with companies like NVIDIA continuing to release new products on this kind of every every two-year basis, uh, that's going to continue to drive a nice growth into or a nice demand into AI and data center solutions. So we can see NVIDIA right now is sitting at $455. I want to say in the past five days, the stock is pretty much flat. Um, obviously, year to date, the stock is a beast up over 218%. So with NVIDIA, a few things I want to talk about is first, we did see kind of talks happening in Washington to really focus on AI standards and the best practices. NVIDIA was one of the companies there kind of showing support one way. Um, they had their NVIDIA's chief scientist, Bill Daly, testify before a U.S. Senate subcommittee seeking input on potential legislations covering generative AI. Separately, NVIDIA's founder and CEO, Jensen Hong, will join other industry leaders in a closed-door meeting on AI Wednesday with the full Senate. Um, I do believe some of the big players there were obviously the CEO of Tesla, the CEO of Palantir as well. Uh, so it was a pretty crazy AI powerhouse there. Um, a lot of great minds, in my opinion, in, in one place. So uh, pretty interesting to kind of see uh, how this is kind of going. And I'm definitely curious to see where this is going to lead into. Finally, I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. And check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. The next thing I want to talk about is some uh, NVIDIA AI news. They do kind of share a blog about their, their Enterprise 4.0, which is for production-ready generative AI solutions. So they do mention that, hey, look, we, we're a huge AI company. Obviously, we have the accelerators, but we do have software to help you kind of create your own AI solutions. And that's NVIDIA's AI Enterprise which now includes NVIDIA Nemo, which is an end-to-end -end cloud native framework for data curation at scale. Uh, and this kind of helps creators kind of customize their large language models and optimize inference on users' preferred platform. Uh, so overall, we can kind of just see how NVIDIA's kind of continues to improve their solution. Now they're in the four, uh, version 4.0 here in NVIDIA AI Enterprises, and they're talking about all the solutions like NVIDIA Morpheus, which is great for cybersecurity. We saw NVIDIA Nemo, which is good for pre-training large language models. We also see NVIDIA Triton, uh, which is good for the inference side of solutions as well. So uh, it's a pretty cool update. If you guys want to read it, I definitely recommend checking out the blog. Um, but 
but it just kind of showcases the strength of NVIDIA and their AI solutions. Now, one that I thought was pretty interesting on September 12th, so about two days ago, um, we are seeing that, hey, we're kind of seeing this boost in quantum computing. And even though quantum computing is not possible at the moment based on technology, we are already doing forms of simulations thanks to supercomputing at scale and obviously thanks to NVIDIA. Uh, so um, there was a kind of quick blog that mentions that a computational scientist and machine learning group led at the U.S. Department of Energy's um, Brookhaven National Laboratory is one of many researchers gearing up to run quantum computing simulations on a supercomputer for the first time thanks to new software. So what's happening here is there's this kind of new open source engine which seems to be used for quantum computing simulations which was built on nvidia cool quantum software development kit um, which lets simulations run on high performance clusters of nvidia gpus so i know a lot of people are saying hey look jose what happens in the future when things like quantum computing comes out how is that going to affect the acceleration market how is that going to affect nvidia in general but nvidia is definitely a kind of a forefront player here as well uh, and obviously they are focusing in this kind of technology as well be it via being software development kits via maybe pushing hardware into the future uh, but this supercomputer that's kind of used to run the simulation is using as many as 256 nvidia a100 tensor core gpus uh, to simulate about three dozen qubits the power for calculators quantum computer uses uh, so pretty interesting nothing here in my opinion is completely 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 revolutionary uh, but it just showcases how nvidia continues to push into growing markets or emerging markets right we see nvidia continue to increase its solutions in the software market we see nvidia continue to imp- improve or shows its solutions in quantum computing and we see nvidia trying to be a leader here in the ai space um, making sure they're the they say their piece in form of the white house and the united states government so i think that was some pretty interesting news for nvidia now i want to take a closer look at apple apple recently showcased their new iphone 15 15 pro 15 pro max and whatever um what i thought was super interesting about there though is they did showcase their new silicon device and that is going to be their a17 um the a17 pro is the industry's first three nanometer chip uh and this is pretty interesting right uh not to anyone's surprise everybody knew that apple was going to get tsmc's first three nanometer uh kind of production line main reason is apple is by far the biggest customer of tsmc uh so obviously tsmc is going to kind of give them first dibs um this new cpu is up to 10 percent faster uh, with micro architectural and design improvements and this is pretty interesting so a few things to talk about here obviously there is improvements because going from five nanometer to three nanometers you kind of get some form of efficiency and speed boost And some people might be saying, hey, Jose, 10% is not that fast. Um, It kind of reminds me of a little bit, right? Even to myself, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Intel when they were kind of releasing new generations of CPUs uh, and processors. It was very, very minuscule kind of performance gains. Uh, and, And that is true, right? I do believe maybe right now, in the phone industry, we don't really need to accelerate too much the CPU performance. Uh, so a, uh, maybe Apple is kind of holding back a little bit, um, but they are focusing a lot on kind of their GPU within this chip. This chip also has a kind of a GPU, uh, some GPU processors, uh, and they do mention that's up to 20% faster and unlocks entirely new experience. Uh, so it does seem like Apple might be shifting a little bit from maybe CPU performance and trying to increase maybe GPU performance for its phones. Um, I don't know, maybe they're kind of forecasting into the future as they're kind of focusing in more like spatial things, um, virtual reality, augmented reality, maybe gaming, maybe the metaverse, maybe artificial intelligence. They're kind of seeing that, hey, look, CPU is pretty cool, but maybe we need to have this GPU, these accelerators go a little bit better. Uh, so something pretty interesting there. Um, um, I, I mean, it just kind of showcases the strength of Apple and their silicon devices. Another perk for those that are not familiar, if you go from five nanometer to three nanometer, normally your yields get better maybe your pricing per chip gets more uh, gets cheaper um, overall so that's another kind of reason why a lot of semiconductor tech giants or why a lot of tech giants move from sub to, to smaller to smaller nodes right because in theory they can get more 
products per wafer, uh, so overall decre- increasing their yield uh, and maybe decreasing the cost per device. So uh, pretty interesting thoughts there. Apple obviously uh, showcases some cool things with their A17 Pro. I'm kind of sticking here with TSMC. I just want to showcase how their technology has evolved. Right, we've we got seven nanometers in 2018. We have five nanometers in 2020. We kind of saw three nanometers, maybe not in full production in 2022. We're seeing full production here in 2023. Next in line is going to be the two nanometer. The two nanometer is going to happen more in 2025 for volume production. Uh, but maybe in TSMC side, they're going to probably put it in 2024 when they really start to release it, right? But the volume production is most likely starting in 2025. For those that are not familiar, two nanometers technology is going to be a huge change into semiconductor manufacturing. There's a lot of things at play. Um, one of the things is like the gate all around. Um, optimization or construction there so two nanometers i do believe is going to be a big jump uh compared to what we're seeing right now so i just wanted to kind of showcase this trend and this chart of tsmc's kind of uh, progress within this advanced manufacturing nodes. Uh, now kind of talking about TSMC, they do mention that they will start trial production at Arizona Fab in 2024. So for those that are not familiar, and actually let's take a closer look at TSMC stock right now. Uh, TSMC stock is sitting at $91, $92 at the moment. Um, TSMC is kind of expanding globally, and they are building a semiconductor manufacturing plant in Arizona. Unfortunately, in their last recent earnings, they did mention, hey, look, building a fabrication plant in the United States is a little bit different than building it where we're from. Uh, So we're kind of seeing some form of hurdles right now. So we're actually delaying the introduction of, of this plant. But instead of kind of delaying it fully, it does seem like TSMC is gonna have a trial a trial line uh, which is going to help to kind of offset maybe some of the orders they had for 2024 i think that's a pretty interesting move for tsmc to make and i'm actually pretty excited about that right um i didn't think they would do that um next we do hear reports that tsmc is considering building advanced chips in japan after the u.s friction uh, uh after u.s friction right we like i mentioned we're, we're seeing kind of this kind of bottleneck that tsmc or these hurdles that tsmc is seeing in arizona and for those that are not familiar tsmc is building manufacturing plants in japan in Japan, though, it's more kind of focused on on kind of your uh, older chips, your mature chips, uh, which are mainly used for things like automotive, like robotics and stuff like that. Uh, but it does kind of come reports from industry insiders that right now um, Japan um, TSMC might be thinking of expanding that manufacturing plant in Japan that they are building right now to also include maybe some advanced semiconductors um, because maybe the culture is a little bit better in their eyes compared to the American culture. So a few things to kind of cover there for TSMC. Now I want to take a closer look at AMD. There was a tweet posted here, uh, and I found I forgot where I found this article, but TSM, uh, there was kind of a person who ended up seeing that AMD released a few Epic server processors from their third generations that just came out this year, uh, and this month, right? And that's pretty interesting because the third generation is about two years old. AMD is currently releasing their fourth generation right now. Uh, so we can see, for example, the 7203P product line came out in uh, September 5th of 2023. Um, this is an AMD server s- Epic CPU, but it is only a uh, core CPU. We can see the pricing is not that crazy, $338. Um, but it does kind of showcase that, hey, look, maybe AMD continues to see some form of demand for their third generation, or if that's not the case, maybe AMD is just releasing some more products as they try to reduce their inventory in the third generation market. So a little bit of both. We have heard from AMD in the past that their third generation, the Milan family, is a little bit competitive to Sapphire Rapids. Uh, So again, it could be a little bit of both things. They could be trying to reduce their inventory levels on 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 their third generation family, or they are still seeing somewhat of a demand into these products. Um, But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care, have a good day, and see you next time.
Before we go any further, guys, we just hit 27.9. I'm trying to hit 30,000 subs by the end of the year. So I just want to say thank you for the support. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to hit the sub button. If you haven't, make sure to hit the thumbs up. It does help with the overall algorithm. Um, if you want to learn more about the semiconductor market, like I mentioned, master's degree in electrical engineer, worked at some pretty cool places. I have weekly exclusive videos on a semiconductor membership. Just click join to learn more. If you want more, uh, a special offer, check out fool.com slash Jose for a special offer with the Motley Fool. Free new, uh, newsletter, check out josenaharo.substack.com. Free semiconductor news, check out semiconductorwatch.com. And finally, 